you, Chair. Um, Director General, as you know, the, uh, last year the Parliament adopted two own initiative reports that fall within the scope of uh, the debate this morning, one on mandatory due diligence and also on non-financial reporting directive. The Parliament set out a, an ambitious and progressive position in relation to these initiatives, and I very much expect the Commission to match these positions. I was glad to see the Commission respond positively to the Parliament's request for a revision of the non-financial reporting directive uh, by bringing forward the CSRD proposal, which myself and other colleagues are working on currently. However, we are hearing disturbing suggestions that the Commission is preparing to water down its proposal on sustainable corporate governance, which we expect to be published soon. More specifically, we have been told that this proposal will only apply to European companies with more than 500 employees. This would be unacceptable for this House, which has been crystal clear in the way that it has voted on these files in the past. A risk-based approach should be taken when determining which companies are covered by the scope of this proposal. It's entirely possible that sm small and medium-sized companies could cause significant harm and there should be no blanket exemption. Uh, I strongly believe that the proposal must cover SMEs and high-risk sectors. I know certain colleagues are concerned and has already been expressed this morning about the administrative burden, but I think this is the wrong way to think about it. EU-level le legislation will provide legal certainty across the EU27, levelling the playing field, strengthening our single market and providing, of course, a deregulatory effect in, in circumstances where some member states have already provided a statutory basis for due diligence. As Rapporteur for the Inter-Opinion inter on Sustainable Corporate Governance, I will endeavour to represent the Parliament's position fully. I would ask the Director-General to comment on this and also proposals around differentiated obligations for SMEs and the phasing in of their inclusion, if possible. On forced labour, uh, very quickly, I would ask the Director-General to uh, consider the political point that the failure to bring forward the proposal on sustainable corporate governments has in fact forced MEPs to explore the kind of alternatives that uh, she outlined this morning for addressing the issue of forced labour. Thank you, Chair.